Good evening, YouTube. So thus far with him, we've covered the uh, harvestable yields that come from the stock. And to review, the stock has two components that can be harvested and brought to market. There's the, the, the outer bast fiber on the stem of the plant, and then there's the inner woody core, which can be used for you know, a number of industrial applications. And then from the reproductive parts, there is the seed and the seed has edible, cosmetic, industrial uses as well. Now, in this video, I want to talk about another yield of hemp that, while you can't exactly take it to market and, and sell it, it's a very important part of the overall economic analysis to growing hemp. And that is hemp's value in rotation because of how it improves the soil. So if you look at this picture here, the gentleman is holding up two different hemp plants. This first hemp plant on the left is probably grown in fairly good soil, deep soil, good amount of, of loose organic matter. And you see the hemp plant has this tap root that goes down and down and down. And the researchers have found that this is indicative of the fact that hemp really evolved in a sort of Mediterranean climate where uh, you know, it doesn't rain very frequently during the summer months where, when it grows. So it has this habit of growing a taproot to seek out the water. And this is a big part of the reason why hemp is a very uh, um, fairly drought tolerant uh, annual field crop. And you could grow it with you know, less applied water than something like wheat or sorghum or corn. Uh, it seeks out its water through this taproot but it also has these fine side roots, and these side roots are really what puts on the most number of the really fine, can't see in detail in this picture, root hairs. And I really like to think of this analogy that the root hairs are sort of like the leaves on the upside of the plant. So the leaves do most of the photosynthesizing, the absorbing of sunlight, just as the root hairs do most of the actual absorbing of water and of um, nutrients. And, and that sort of flow. And most of the other like more visible roots, like this large root structure here is for stability, for storing nutrients, for uh, laying, laying out the, the track work for seeking out the water and the, 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 um, the minerals. Now the hemp plant on the other side, this hemp plant was planted in an area where there was a more severe compaction layer and the hemp plant responded to the compaction layer probably somewhere here in the soil by shattering its, by breaking its taproot apart into five layers and seeking out every fissure it could to try and get down into the soil. And uh, this habit of how this hemp plant grows really reminds me of another very important plant, another plant that I like a lot and I've geeked out about a lot called uh, the daikon radish or the tillage radish. Uh, one company here in this picture markets their variety as the groundhog. And I really, really like this plant. It's really good. I've grown it in a cover crop, or I guess you could say an edible cover crop, because we ended up harvesting a significant amount of this. And uh, if you like Korean food, this is, um, you know, this is the sort of radish they use to make in certain radish kimchi. It's also called daikon. Uh, Professor Cullen from Cal Poly Pomona, who did a lot of, you know, research work in Wisconsin knows all about this because in Wisconsin a lot of the Midwestern states where they're doing really on the forefront of some of the excellent cover crop work they do a lot of work with this tillage radish and you know what it does is by putting down this huge massive taproot and you don't even see in this picture I mean this picture indicates better but you know this part of the radish is really the part that you would eat you would cut up to make kimchi but it still has part of the taproot that goes down another 14 inches or so and if you were to cut this at the top here and then leave this in your field to rot, to decay, to decompose, all the nutrients that are in there would return to the field and you would add a significant amount of organic matter directly to your soil and it would leave this convenient large fissure for water to sink back in and to recharge your whole uh, soil layer so that the next crop you grow in here will find you know significantly improved soil, better tilth, better organic matter. And we got to remember, you know, carbon, soil carbon, one of my favorite topics when it comes to agriculture, one of my favorite things to geek out about, because uh, that, that soil organic matter is the battery of the soil. It holds the water, it holds the nutrients, it holds the, the, the ions, 
it holds uh, and feeds and nourishes your whole soil soil food web. You know, you're talking about your bacteria, your your fungi, your protozoa, your nematodes, your microarthropods, all of these things that on the soil, on the microscopic layer, or on, on a microscopic level, are actively cycling nutrients so that your plant can uptake them and then turn that into uh, uh, into sugars, carbohydrates, and all the good stuff that we eat. So, you know, the comparison, granted, it's not nearly as dramatic on this hemp plant. It's much smaller, but you can see that it's doing some of the same work. And uh, when you put this into a no-till system, like here, because it's no-till, the important part of no-till is that every time you till, especially if you, you mold board plow, you turn this whole thing over, and then you, uh, you disc harrow and you chop it all up, all of this work that the, the root did, all of this work that the root did is more or less undone because you've disturbed that soil structure. So, you know, you look at this picture. I got this picture off of the Twitter account of uh, Manitoba Harvest, one of the, the great big hemp growers in Canada. And, uh, you know, they're experimenting with, with no-till and hemp. And you leave that root in there to decompose, to leave that channel, that great aggregated soil structure, and you plant right into this. And what they've found fairly consistently is that crops that grow after hemp do significantly better. And in, in this case, really, it's wheat. And I'll have a link to some of the research below, but, but farmers and researchers were finding that wheat planted after hemp has a, a significant increase in the yield. And that's partly because of the improvement in the soil quality and structure caused by this, you know, this, this root uh, this taproot, but it's also because the, the hemp has a closed canopy and it really does a good job of controlling weeds in the previous season. So you plant hemp in the summer and provided you can keep the weeds from getting ahead of it in the first, you know, two, three weeks or so, uh, and then the hemp closes its, its canopy and all the weeds at the bottom really just can't compete anymore. They can't get any more sunlight. And this is particularly good for cleaning up weedy fields that, that might have some perennial weed issues. And, you know, that's one of the ways that they were able to get increased yields with, with wheat and some other crops. In fact, some researchers from Australia who are doing a, a lot of work in hemp told me that they have to design all their experiments in mind while keeping in mind that anything they plant after hemp for the next, you know, year or two is going to have abnormally high yields because of what the hemp does to improve the quality of the soil. As we go forward and we talk more about sustainable and regenerative agriculture, uh, these are the sort of crops that we need to be growing, crops that put a lot of organic matter back into the soil, back through the root mass. So that's hemp, that's tillage radish or, or daikon, besides daikon is also delicious. I love kimchi. I think I'm going to have to make a video about kimchi and uh, another plant called sun hemp or protolaria. Very interesting nitrogen fixer also has activity against nematodes. But now I'm digressing and nerding out a little too much. I hope you found this video to be interesting. Uh, I'll have some more videos up for you guys soon. West Coast.